Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Should You Buy It, where all we do is talk a little bit about the game and tell you whether or not we think it's worth the cost. In this episode, we'll be playing The Isle, a third-person dinosaur survival game where you will need to hunt, gather, and maybe even find a mate if you want to survive. Now, the first question that we cover in these videos is what stage of development is the game in? And in this case, in The Isle of Verma, it is currently in early access and available on PC for $20. But what exactly is the game? Well, there's something that you need to understand about the Isle, and that is that it is separated into two largely different versions of the game. The first being the Isle Legacy, which is what you will get the first time you boot up the game, and the second being the Isle Everma, which is kind of a beta branch of the game. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> Now you will get both of these different versions of the game for simply purchasing it. It's important, however, to note that the developers have all but given up on the Isle legacy at this point, as they are trying to move over towards the new engine with better graphics and overall capabilities, which is why we will be reviewing the Isle of Verma here. Just to make it super clear, in this video we will not be reviewing the Isle legacy, but instead will be reviewing the Isle of Verma, as that is the direction the game is heading and the direction most players will want to go towards. Now if you guys want to save money on games, you should check out Humble Bundle in the description below. Humble Bundle will not only help to give you a discount on games sometimes, but will also help charity and support this channel. Everything you purchase on Humble Bundle will go towards helping a charity, helping our channel, and giving you some kind of a discount if there's a discount running on that game, which they have tons of discounts that Steam does not all the time. And again, if you want to save money, just check out Humble Bundle down below by clicking the link. Now that that's all out of the way, what exactly is the Isle of Verma gameplay like? Well, the Isle is a game with a very simplistic playstyle on the surface, but a much more rich and in-depth one that you will come to learn as you play the game more and more. The core gameplay loop will be something along the lines of spawning into the world as your dinosaur of choice, and then running around the world trying to grow to full size. This can take you anywhere from 30 minutes all the way up to multiple in-game hours, at least for some of the larger dinosaurs and more powerful ones that is. There is, however, a way to speed up that growing process, and that is through the game's diet system. The diet system involves you trying to get three different food types into your stomach, which are each represented by one of three different symbols. What type of food grants you what type of symbol will vary depending on the type of dino that you currently are playing. For an example, if you're playing as a dinosaur that likes to fly around a lot and eats fish, you might need to hunt down a fish if you want to get that specific symbol associated with eating fish in your diet. Whereas for a more land-based dinosaur, you might need to hunt down something like a player-controlled dinosaur if you want to get that same type of symbol for your diet. The game varies even wider than this though, as you can also play as herbivores, which have their own distinct diet system that will usually require you to cross a very large distance distance of the map if you want to find all the different symbols you need to grow quickly. You see, as a carnivore, you'll be playing probably rather aggressive, but that doesn't mean you can take on every single threat. In the beginning in particular, you will be very, very weak and need to scavenge off other players' kills if you want to stay alive. But as you grow stronger, you will gain more HP, stronger damaging abilities, and new abilities as well as even the option to mate and grow your own pack. Now, you may be wondering, does everybody just play the most powerful dinosaur in the game? And the short answer to that is no. This is because of the fact that almost every dino has its own unique playstyle that is more fun or less depending on what you enjoy as well as your group size. For an example, one of the currently more powerful dinos in the game is the Carno. They are strong, powerful, and able to 1v1 almost any other dino they come across. However, they are limited to a pack size of three and take a very long time to grow, as well as tend to need a lot of food, especially once reaching adulthood. This means that living in a group of more to three Carnos, even if you could, would be a challenge as finding enough food to keep you all alive would be extremely difficult. Then again, if you want to play as, say, an Omniraptor, you can play with up to eight other players and will have a very different hit and run tactic of play if you want to stay alive and find the food that you need to keep moving. 
Now, before we move over to the pros and cons section of this video, I want to take a moment to talk about the game's graphics. One of the things that stands out the most about this game is the fact that the art is just so incredibly immersive and well done. It tries to portray a truly Jurassic Park world, but also has very in-depth detail with just about every little thing you'll see. The dinosaur models alone are stunning enough, but when you stand atop a hill and peer out over the horizon, the game really just helps to immerse you into its world and makes you feel like you are actually playing that dinosaur and actually trying to survive. Alrighty, now let's move over to the pros and cons section of the video. First up for the pros is that the game has a very easy to pick up feel to it, but has enough depth to keep you invested for hundreds if not thousands of hours. Every single creature has its own unique playstyle as well as sometimes their own unique mechanics that only apply to them. This means that there'll be plenty of different playstyles for you to try out, and some of them are very hard to succeed at, so there'll be plenty of challenge and plenty of time for you to get invested. Next is that the game has a great sense of reward and punishment via its growth system. This is because when you're fully grown, you are powerful, but it takes multiple hours to get there in most creatures' cases. This then gives the game a constant sense of accomplishment followed by failure every time you die and are sent back to the beginning of that never ending cycle of becoming a baby, growing throughout the world, dying again, and starting all over. After that is the variety of playable dinos and uniqueness of each and every one of them. For an example, while you might not think there's a big difference between a raptor and a carno, their playstyles and abilities are actually drastically different and require you to play in a different way if you want to survive. They also tend to require you to work with different amounts of people, which means you'll have to be a more social player or a less social player depending on which one you've chosen. Lastly is that the graphics and size of the world are extremely well done. Everything from seeing dinos running around to watching the sun come up over the horizon are all beautiful in their own way and are just so nice to look at. In fact, I found myself just staring out into the distance as I constantly was amazed at the sheer size of the world and the beauty that it presents. Alrighty, now let's move over to the cons. And first up for the cons is that the game has you waiting around a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. What I mean here is that while growing is cool and getting your diet is nice, once you've accomplished that and you still have to grow for two to three more hours and you don't need food for another 30 to 45 minutes, you'll find yourself just sitting in a bush waiting for yourself to grow. If I'm being completely honest, there were countless times that I turned on YouTube for about 20 minutes or so before jumping back in the game to start hunting for food once again. This seems to be a problem overall in the game. Luckily though, once you reach the end game and you are fully grown, most creatures get hungry enough fast enough that you're going to constantly need to be on the move. So you could say that the game doesn't really start until you reach the end game, depending on your perspective. Next up is that cross-teaming is a thing in this game and it feels wrong and unimmersive. For a game all about immersion, it makes no sense for herbivores to team up with carnivores, yet players will still do it. Fortunately though, if this is something that bothers you as much as it bothers me, you can simply play on a community server in order to not have to deal with it as they put rules in place to prevent it. You might enjoy it, but personally, I have no desire to see an herbivore and a carnivore working together to hunt me down. And lastly for the cons is that there's actually some really cool development updates coming out, but they are very few and far between. For context, this game has been in development now for five to six years, which is no small matter. That is a very long time for any game to be in early access. And while the devs have put in a lot of work and switched to an entirely different game engine in that time period, it's unfortunate to see for many players as they weren't really wanting to wait six years to play the game that they paid for. With that being said, before we move into the rest of this video, if you do pick up this game, buy it for what it is now, not for what it might be later, as it may never come. So now it's time for the rating for the game, and when we rate games, we want to get one hour of enjoyment out of every one dollar that the game costs. So for this game in particular, in the Isle of Irma, we would want to get 20 hours of enjoyment out of the $20 cost of the game. And after playing this game for well over 24 hours, we give it 7 out of 10 potatoes. The Isle of Verma is actually a really solid game with a solid foundation to build upon, and is probably on top of that one of the best dinosaur games that's currently on the market. 
Unfortunately, it seems that it's going to be quite a while until the game is completed, and while the devs do constantly update their gaming community, the game updates themselves tend to be further apart. It has a beautiful graphical system and delivers well on immersing its players into this world, but again, unfortunately, due to the slow development, it's been a long road just to get here. I'm sure if you're into dinosaurs at all, whether as a kid or as an adult, then this game is something you will fall in love with overnight. But if you're like me and look at it more of a survival game rather than a dinosaur simulation game, then it's probably around the middle of the pack. And so when we take all of these factors into consideration, we feel that the Isle of Verma is more than likely worth the cost. Now, before you all go, I want to give a quick apology to all of our viewers as we haven't been posting a whole lot of content lately. We had some personal things come up, but those are all under control now and will no longer be an issue. So you can expect to see more survival game content starting to come out on this channel. And if you want to see that, make sure to like and subscribe so that you're updated whenever it comes out. I do also want to give a special thank you to our channel members, which currently include AZ Blackbird and Jens Lund. You guys are awesome and huge supporters of us, and we can't thank you enough. If you want to check out that program, just click the join button down below where you can see all the cool benefits you'll get when you do become a member of our channel. I'm Game Advisor, and I'll see you in the next one.